Live from the news leader in Northern California, this is Cron 4 News Nightbeat. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pete Wilson, and here are the stories making headlines in the Bay Area and around the world at this hour. A big turnout at a special PTA meeting in Danville tonight. A meeting called because of some hateful messages posted against a teacher on the Internet. We'll have a live report in less than a minute. An airline hijacking drama has been going on for more than 20 hours now. Chechen rebels hijacked a Russian jetliner over Turkey. It's on the runway in Medina, Saudi Arabia, surrounded by security forces. The hijackers released women and children passengers. Other passengers escaped out a back exit, but more than 100 people remain on the plane. The hijackers want to go to Afghanistan. And Napster is seeing fewer users as new screening technology takes hold. The music sharing website has about half its normal traffic since it started blocking unauthorized songs, but some copyrighted files are still downloadable. Napster blames the recording industry for failing to give them enough information to block access. Now, Steve, first forecast. All right, outside at the moment, we're starting to see some fog right now. In fact, uh, we're going to have some in the morning. That's the way your weekend uh, forecast will start. Temperatures mostly in the 40s. There'll be some upper 30s in the North Bay. We'll have the full details on your weekend coming up. And now that top story, hate on the Internet. Hundreds of parents turned out at a special PTA meeting in Danville tonight. They were there to hear a report about a recent Internet attack against a teacher and to voice concerns about other worrisome problems at Charlotte Wood Middle School. Crown 4's Mark Jones is live on the night beat in Danville with us tonight. Mark, what's going on? Well, this is a microcosm of schools everywhere. Lots of good students, great teachers, and some serious social problems. Eighth grade students here had attacked an art drama teacher on the internet. This was the first parent meeting on the topic. Immediately, the Danville Police Department was contacted. Two students have been suspended for buying or selling marijuana on campus. Last week, there was concern of violence. We have been notified that so-and-so has access to a gun and plans to bring it to school. Officials said that was nothing but a rumor with no basis in fact. The district, though, did not tell this large gathering that students had also been attacking students on the Internet. Attacks that were racial and religious in nature. Why not? Well, the purpose of this is to try and get, uh, find out what the concerns of the parents are and to address them there. So yeah, this how was, do they this even know if they, if they don't, aren't told what happened? Well, I think, uh, I think that certainly there, this information is out there. I'm curious because I heard in the meeting in there that it was a gay bashing thing, but it's my understanding that it was not only gay bashing of a teacher, mm -hmm. but there were also students. You're right. S some of the things that, there were some things that got lost in this whole issue. One of the things that got lost for a, a significant amount of time and was how, how are the other students that were addressed on this website um, dealt with, and that's being handled. One school official said they worried that it would cause undue concern. You all are on the path of destruction. You have warning signs. Um, I do not see any one of these instances as being unique to Charlotte Wood. They are the culture and the time that we live in. We maybe have electronic bullies, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, uh, we have, we, you know, at Santee you have the physical bullies. Maybe some parents need to get a little bit more involved with their children's activities. Mm -hmm. you know? The district says it is committed to fixing whatever problems exist here. It stresses this is an exemplary school. In many ways, it may be like your kid's school. In Danville, Mark Jones, Cron 4 News. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. David Horowitz, the man who put a controversial and some say racist ad in the Daily Cal a while back, though there's considerable argument about that word, brought protesters out in Berkeley tonight. He spoke there defending his ad, attacking the idea of paying blacks reparation for slavery. Some people who came out tonight protested the appearance, while others defended his right to free speech. The Daily Cal apologized for running Horowitz's ad, and that has sparked still more controversy. And three basketball fans are demanding an apology from NBA star Jason Williams, who they say made racial slurs against them. The fans admit they were heckling Williams at the time. That was when the Sacramento Kings played the Warriors last month, but they say he responded by using racial and anti-gay insults. Two of the fans are Asian American men, the other is white. The league fined Williams $15,000 following the incident. 
Even with officials securing long-term power contracts, the experts say that rolling blackouts are going to be a fact of life this summer in California. The grim warning came today from U.S. Same Energy today, Secretary right. Spencer Abraham. His agency is trying to find ways to increase power supplies in the West, such as diverting power from Mexico. But California has little wiggle room because energy consumption is going to outpace what can be supplied this summer. The problem will get worse, and blackouts this summer appear inevitable when peak demand is expected to be about 61,000 megawatts, while supplies are anticipated to be only about 56,000 megawatts. The energy secretary also warned that California's energy shortages could spill over into neighboring states. President Bush says California should solve its energy problems without federal intervention. Meanwhile, a plan by the state's utilities to fire 3,000 employees has been denied. PG&E said that it could save $100 million this year alone if it laid off 1,000 workers. But today, the Public Utilities Commission rejected that request, saying that fewer workers could compromise service and safety. But a stopgap measure took effect today to help plug the energy drain. An executive order now requires retailers to cut back on their nighttime lot lights. And Night Beats Ross Palumbo is live in Oakland, which is still lit up in the background as we look at it. Ross, the latest. Well, Pete, most dealerships are fairly well lit, as you know, but this one here tonight is pretty much in the dark. The reason why, right here, most of these floodlights have been switched off. Now, just down the road, there is another dealership, but you can't see its marquee very well because it has been turned off as well. This is exactly what the governor wants. He wants major retailers to dim or turn off their signs and lights during non-business hours, and most businesses we talked to tonight are taking all of this very seriously. The name of the game in retail is your name. Pretty important, actually, on the sign. But on Union Square, Imposter says it will pull the plug and take some of the glitter off its crowning commercial jewel. It's not going to be easy. Let's put it that way. It's, uh, we'll do what we have to do. Because of an executive order issued six weeks ago, they have to do it tonight. I am mandating by March 15th that every retail establishment in this state uh, substantially reduce their outdoor lighting. The governor hopes to reduce nighttime retail energy use by 50 percent. Not complying is a misdemeanor crime, possibly costing retailers a thousand dollars in fines. A thousand dollar fine, I don't see this being a big problem. Not a problem at borders because the bookseller has already been cutting back lights, dimming them near the doorways. But could it be cutting into sales? Uh, whether it actually affects sales or not, I don't know. If anyone knows how lights lure in customers, we sell uh, lamps. The clerks at Lamps Plus do. They usually keep 80% of these lights lit. People rather to see the lights on and how it looks. Now they're dimming more than 50% to save energy and reduce any possible light liability. We should start to turn off some of the light when we're not that busy or not that many people here. Yeah. I think that's a very good idea for, you know, to save, you know, to save energy. Most customers see it in the same light. You know, we're practicable, they should do their part, but where it's not, you know, maybe at 2 o'clock in the morning or midnight, turn off your lights because the traffic going by is just not that great. Now, not all businesses have their lights on. In fact, this dealership right across the street has its lights on, and that is okay as long as it's for security purposes. It's the job of police to enforce this governor's order, but all the agencies we've talked to tonight say that they haven't issued one citation. They want to make sure everyone is up to speed with this new order. In Oakland, I'm Ross Palumbo, Cron 4 News. All right, Ross, well, we almost heard the end of that, uh, the ambulance passing by there. But uh, again, Ross, repeating that there are variations on the way you interpret this bill. Well, there is a lot more ahead on Night Beat tonight coming up. How Congress plans to make it more difficult to erase debt through bankruptcy. And one market recovers, another continues to slide a check on stocks. And performance art is all about outraging everybody is back. You're watching Cron 4, the 24-hour news station. Jay's all new with Rodney Dangerfield. She entered an ugly contest. They told her no professionals, you know? <laughs> Oscar nominated actor. Other banks in the dust. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Find out what's happening on Bay Area roads instantly. Just click on the traffic button on the Pix page at kpix.com.
On to your money now. It was a mixed day on Wall Street, but not the worst we've seen this week. The Dow closed up 57 points to end the day at 10,031. The Nasdaq fell 31 points, closing below 2,000 for the second time this week. Redwood Shores-based Oracle helped pull the tech sector down, announcing it, too, will have to lay off employees. The company posted its first earnings shortfall in more than three years. A bill that would make it tougher for people to declare a personal bankruptcy is now on its way to the president's desk. Late this afternoon, the Senate approved a bankruptcy reform measure by a vote of 83 to 15. The measure also requires those in bankruptcy to pay back some of their debts. Debate on this issue has been heated. There's people that have the ability to repay, they go into bankruptcy, uh, they go into Chapter 7, everything would be wiped clean. Somebody else would pick up for their not paying their bills. This is a class issue. These are poor people we're talking about. The president has indicated that he will sign the bill. Another sign of the slowing economy, the number of delinquent credit card accounts. The American Bankers Association says the number of past due credit cards and consumer loans jumped during the last three months of 2000. The development, according to one economist, is more evidence that consumers are having a hard time paying their bills. The numbers are the highest that they've been in a year. And a warning tonight for anyone planning to file their tax returns electronically. A watchdog group claims that it found ways to hack into the computer system used by the IRS. And as Sean Comey reports, this raises new questions about whether e-filing could expose your return to tampering and you to identity theft. And we type in the individual's social security number. Investigators from the GAO, or General Accounting Office, say they easily hacked into the IRS computer system, gaining access to virtually every piece of information contained in electronically filed tax returns. If the GAO is getting in, your local hacker was probably getting in. Hackers could exploit the weaknesses in the system to alter your returns, making it look like you were cheating on your taxes. How would you like to get the IRS knocking on your door one day and saying, we just looked at your tax return, and according to your tax return, you didn't claim any income in the following three areas, but we have W-2s, and by the way, we're taking your house because you didn't pay your taxes. The IRS says it has fixed the problem. The IRS has put those changes into place by adding uh, an extra layer of protection, which means that the taxpayers can feel safe um, and secure using the e-file e system to file their tax returns this filing season. Despite the problems, the IRS wants to have 80% of all returns filed electronically in the next six years. So why is the IRS so enthusiastic about e-filing? It saves them a lot of money because the agency doesn't have to pay its employees to transfer the information from millions of paper tax forms to government computers. Questions about security may make the program a tough sale with taxpayers. That would make me think twice, certainly. Brother-in-law had his identity stolen a couple years ago, and this seems like another way to get that information and make your life miserable. The IRS insists the system is now safe, but that's what they said last year. At the same time, congressional investigators were hacking into their computers. Sean Comey, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. The IRS expects 42 million Americans to file electronic tax returns this year. Coming up next, you're going to see some uh, dramatic home video of a boat with three passengers on board as it sinks off the coast of Santa Barbara. Hi, I'm Lawrence Carno. A weak winter storm slides across the Bay Area. Now here come the winds. We'll talk about that in Weather Everywhere next. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by iShares Index Stocks. Diversify with hundreds of stocks in a single trade. Own the stocks of South Korea or more than a dozen other countries in a single trade. iShares Index Stocks. Ask your advisor. This spring, you seem like the most wonderful person I've ever met. What a moron. 
MGM presents an outrageous comedy about love. Oh, yeah, she's a delicate flower. Money. The older, the better. Luck, they died right after the wedding. Oh, darling. Sex. What are you doing? Get off me. Are you mixing medications? And other sports. Get all the fish. <laughs> Got it. Heartbreakers. Rated PG-13. Starts March 23rd. Special sneak preview this Saturday. Weather Everywhere Network is sponsored by Toyota's Big Event, on now at your Toyota dealer. Online we go right now to Douglas Whited Elementary School in Santa Rosa. 48 degrees outside. We're going to check out your Bay Area forecast coming up next. We took a boat to an island. It's a boat. We made up new names for ourselves. We made a list of everything we love. We had a dream, and it was just like this. And it stayed that way. Forever. Forever. Forever and ever and ever. Eternity for men, Calvin Klein. It lasts forever. Your gift with any $32 Eternity for Men purchase at Macy's. This weekend, Enterprise Rent-A-Car announces special low rates from just $9.99 a day. Friday till Monday from just $9.99 a day. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. You're in an accident. You're being rushed to the nearest ER. But they won't let you in. Attention ED staff, we are now on total diversion. Bay Area emergency rooms are overcrowded, understaffed, and putting you at risk. We are at a crisis stage in California. I'm Mike Sugarman. Channel 5 and KCBS are joining forces to show you why it's happening and what's being done to help heal the problem. Crisis in the ER. Starting Monday at 11 on Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Now, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, everywhere. The Santa Rosa Police Department was evacuated today after a bomb threat. Officers say Chad Kelly, a 29-year-old transient, walked into the station and told a detective that he had an explosive device attached to his body and a bomb in his bag. Eighty employees were evacuated and the 911 emergency calls had to be forwarded to the Sheriff's Department. In the 18 years I've been here, this is the first time. Hopefully it's the last time. Kelly was arrested and taken to a mental hospital for observation. Police say that the device strapped to his body was not explosive and what resembled a pipe bomb in his bag was fake. Some very scary moments off the coast of Santa Barbara. Yesterday afternoon, the boat RJ's Fantasy was just minutes from going under with three people on board. But the Coast Guard quickly moved in and rescued the men before they even got wet. Thank God for the United States Coast Guard being out there. Uh, they, were, they were coming back from another assignment and they just happened to be dead on with us, with our course. It's not known yet what caused that 60-foot cabin cruiser to sink. All right, coming up on the weekend, and Lawrence is here with some news. Yeah, you bet. Did you guys notice a storm come by today? A little, little windy. Not much. Just two. A couple sprinkles yeah. in the city. Yeah, mm -hmm. but really not a big storm. Getting late in the season now, and it looks Good. like uh, we are going to see kind of a transitional day for your day tomorrow. But we get you into the weekend, and things are looking good. Today, lots of clouds out there, not much in the way of rainfall as this weak winter storm started to slide across the Bay Area about mid-morning or so. Looked threatening for a bit, but then moved on by and managed to squeeze in some sunshine by the afternoon. Out at the beach, a little bit gloomy outside, and the winds were blowing, really picking up toward the afternoon hours. And tonight, mostly clear skies in Petaluma and around much of the Bay Area, except for the coastline. That's where we're starting to pick up some low cloud and fog. Temperatures really taking a dip around the Bay Area today. Remember yesterday, we had a lot of 70s popping up. It was a good 11 degrees cooler today in Concord at 63, 63 in Vallejo, 63 in San Rafael, 50s back along the coastline. But you get the idea, temperatures really taking a tumble. But I think tomorrow, we're going to start to see these go the other direction by the weekend. We could be talking about 70s all over again. Statewide, we kept you fairly cool. 63 in Sacramento. Surprising 70, though, in Ukiah. High country, 48 degrees in Tahoe. Some snow flurries there as well. 59 degrees in Yosemite. Still holding on to some 80s in parts of Southern California, letting you know that spring is not too far away. We are going to see some changes, though. Tomorrow's going to be a real interesting day. We've got a ridge of high tra pressure trying to build in now. Here's your storm system that moved through the Bay Area, and it looked pretty impressive 
about 10 hours ago, but watch what happens. Rolls on through, most of the energy stays to the north, and when it moves across the Bay Area, it really begins to fall apart, and really nothing left now. But here's your ridge of high pressure sitting off the coastline. This ridge is going to start to try and nudge into the Bay Area, and as it does, the difference between this high pressure ridge and that area of low pressure that moved through is going to cause quite a bit of wind around the Bay Area. We'll probably see a couple of high clouds drift over the top of the ridge as well, right into your Saturday. All right, let's check out your Bay Vision forecast, get you going tomorrow morning. Things are looking awfully nice. Lots of sunny skies around there, except along the coastline. You're going to see the patchy low clouds and fog kind of hugging the coast, maybe just inside the bay. And then as we take you through the morning, these 40s will start to warm up, but really not going to warm up in a hurry with the winds. I think we're going to keep the temperatures down a little bit for tomorrow. Plan on some 50s and some 60s by about the noontime hour. Those 60s really located in many of the inland valleys, kind of hidden away from the winds. But as we take it in the afternoon, they'll spread out just a little bit more. Again, we're going to keep those 50s, though, around much of the peninsula, into the south, and also the north base. So this is how we're going to play it. Let's check out your five-day forecast and take a look at the weekend ahead. For tomorrow, going to see a lot of sunshine out there. Temperatures going to be mainly in the 50s and the 60s. Then Saturday, going to increase a couple of high clouds across your skies, but high pressure should begin to build in. Temperatures will warm up into the 60s and 70s. Sunday, looking awfully good. Monday and Tuesday, it only gets better. All right, let's check out your getaway forecast. Wine country, mostly sunny and warm for the weekend. Expect temperatures running in the upper 60s there to the low 70s. And if you plan to head on other parts of the state, we are looking at some great weather. Patchy fog in the morning hours in Monterey Bay, then becoming mostly sunny. The Sierra looking good, partly cloudy. Just a bit on the breezy side, especially tomorrow if you're traveling up to the high Sierra. And, of course, if you plan to go to Los Angeles, should be mostly sunny and warm. All right, let's check out your ski report. Lots of snow up in the Sierra Nevada. Of course, not much has fallen lately, but plenty of machine-groomed packed powder up there. We're talking six, seven feet of snow up there. Plenty to ski on. Expect spring-like skiing conditions for the weekend ahead. You are going to see some clouds, and you'll see the temperatures warming up, so a little bit slushy toward the afternoon hours. Still, not bad at all, and of course, plenty of snow to ski on. Make sure you check out the road conditions before headed up. That's our latest forecast. And that's Weather Everywhere. This is Rick Wan live in San Diego where Stanford began its march towards the Final Four with a big victory this afternoon. Highlights of post-game interviews when we come back. Today's ski report is brought to you by your Northern California Lexus dealers who invite you to test drive a Lexus today. sophistication of coach. The luxury of Lexus. The limited Lexus ES300 coach edition. Some things were just meant to be together. Save $2,000 while they last at your Northern California Lexus dealer. Kenmore days with 0% financing and all Kenmore appliances over $399 when you use your Sears card. Save on this Kenmore washer for just $399.88 or this Kenmore dryer for just $299.88 and get free delivery on all Kenmore washers and dryers over $399. So don't let another day go by. Sears Kenmore days. The good life at a great price guaranteed. 
When someone's got a problem shooting, I'm the guy they call. I've been studying the mechanics of a perfect basketball shot for 20 years. Fingertips on the ball. When it comes to investing, I look for a mutual fund that takes the same analytical approach. Take the shot. With in-depth research and investment expertise, Oppenheimer Main Street Growth and Income Fund has outperformed the S&P 500 index over the past 10 years. Science is important, but it doesn't hurt to have a feel for the game. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. So <laughs> amazing basketball. The West Region just... West Region hurt a lot of people in their, in their pools today. It really did. That was one region where you say, ouch. And it is the region of the NCAA tournament was loaded with us steps today, but top-seeded Stanford dominated UNC Greensboro from start to finish. Jason Collins led the way with 20 points in the first half, 25 for the game, and mom and dad are pretty happy. This is the Cardinal up by 10. David Shuck led Greensboro with 17 points, one of the few times they were able to really muscle up past the Collins twins. But Stanford simply too big and too quick for Greensboro. Ryan Mendez, coast to coast, and Stanford would take this one in a Lafford today. 89-60 to 60 is the final. Rick Kwan is covering Stanford in San Diego. Rick, our game day guest tonight, Phil Matthews, put it best. Stanford was extremely focused tonight. Yes, they were. They knew what they had to do. They didn't want to stumble early. They were focused. They were concentrated. And after a little bit of a slow start, they took control. About the only thing Stanford didn't do today was beat the 30-point spread, although it did come close. As I mentioned, after struggling early, the Cardinal got hot in more ways than one. Casey Jacobson hit five of his six shots, but it was a technical near the end of the first half that really got him excited. I don't regret getting the technical, you know, um, it, it luckily didn't hurt my, if it hurt my team, I, I would have been, you know, apologetic, but it got me going. I was in, I was into the game. Maybe it got our team going. I don't know, but we weren't going to stand for that. We weren't going to let them just throw us around like that. And, and when he picked up a technical foul, you know, I, I'm happy he did that because it, it tells the referees, it tells the whole place that we're not backing down, even if we're a one seed and they're a 16 seed. While Jason Collins got most of his game high 25 inside. His crowning moment was a three-point basket high off the rim. I started backpedaling, and uh, you know, when it bounced back through, I was like, yeah. You let out a yell, didn't you? Yeah, I let out a yell, trying to get uh, get the team going. Um, we, I said that right before the timeout, we were going to make a run right then, and uh, sure enough, we, we made a run. With Stanford safely ahead, the backup saw plenty of action. Tony Jovacchini scored seven points in 18 minutes, while Justin Davis took the court despite a sore ankle. I felt pretty good out there. Um, like I said, I didn't want to play too much. I didn't want to go any too hard. But from what I did, I felt good. I was jumping a little bit, um, made um, some plays. Nothing too much, but it felt good. Tony came off the bench, played great today. Um, I thought he had a really fantastic game for us. Um, Justin played a little bit. He hadn't been on the court for, I mean, probably about two weeks now. And uh, it just gives a lot, everyone confidence that they know they can go out there and play in the tournament. So, coming up on Saturday, Stanford will take on St. Joseph's, which got by Georgia Tech today, 66-62. It's going to be a big game mentally for the Cardinal because the last two years they lost in the second round. This time, they hope the third time will not be a, a three-peat. That's it from uh, San Diego. Dennis, back to you. Rick, is there anyone in particular that Stanford is concerned about uh, against on the St. Joseph's team? Well, their leading scorer, Marvin O'Connor, he's averaging more than 20 points per game. This season against LaSalle, he scored 18 points in one minute. Now, they don't keep <laughs> records for that category, but that sounds like a record. Pretty impressive guy. He scored more than 30 points five times a season already. So look for Ryan Mendez, Casey Jacobson to really try to shut down this guy, uh, shut down O'Connor for them to have a chance to win. Okay, Rick, we'll see you on the morning show as well. <laughs> Take care, Rick. Why <laughs> three days? They keep that guy up all day, all night long. He's earning his money, man. And then like they that. put him in a sixty-dollar $60 hotel room. I, yeah. I think you surprised him. Yeah, he, that was news to him. <laughs> that, was, that was news to him. You're brutal, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Coming up next, it may be the toughest challenge they have ever faced. We're going to tell you why these Berkeley High seniors are headed to Italy to run a race in memory of a friend. <laughs> Europe.com. All you need to plan your trip.
from the government tourist boards of Europe with online booking by Travelocity.com. Visit Europe. Visit Europe.com. This is allergy face. It's the face you make when your allergies make you miserable. This is Nasacord AQ. It gives you fast, effective first-day nasal allergy relief so you can fight allergy face. Nasacord AQ has no fragrance, is not bad tasting, contains no irritating alcohol, and it has a low incidence of side effects, including sore throat, nosebleed, and cough. Ask your doctor about fast, effective Nasacord AQ and help put allergy face in its place. the security of a four-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and free scheduled maintenance. But most of all, the security of knowing you'll never, ever lose it in the parking lot. The Jaguar XJ, starting at 56,950. Sometime last year, ethnic minorities became the majority, according to U.S. Census Bureau figures released today. While demographers predicted the change years ago, it nonetheless marks a shift in the way Californians view themselves. Silicon Valley in particular has welcomed growing diversity, with immigrant talent helping to fuel the region's remarkable high-tech boom. Limiting that flow could cripple the economy. It's an when you need a new mattress, don't go to a high-priced department store. Go to Mattress Discounters. They always guarantee the lowest prices, and because all they sell are mattresses, they're the experts. Mattress Discounters, the nation's largest mattress retailer. They put America to bed. Have a good night. Finally tonight, a group of high school seniors are headed to Italy to accomplish something together and to remember a friend. The six Berkeley High School seniors leave for Rome tomorrow to run a marathon on March 25th. It's a final hurrah for the longtime friends before they head off to college, and it's also a 26-mile memorial to a classmate who died of leukemia named Gabe Catalfo. The girls are raising $25,000 for the cancer ward at Children's Hospital in Oakland. We've all been lucky in our lives to be, you know, to be able to run around and play sports and be really active and we've never been hindered by like some really big injury or illness and I mean, it's just kind of giving back to people. <laughs> None of the group has run a full marathon before and the father of one of the girls is paying for the trip. You know what, even before they cross the finish line, they are all winners. Absolutely. Good for them. Oh, that, nice. that is our newscast. Uh, thank you for watching. David Letterman is next. Don't forget, more basketball tomorrow. March Madness. Good Take night. care.